Good morning, students. Welcome back to our sleeve bearing project. We've completed a 3D model and we have automatically drawn or had SOLIDWORKS automatically draw our isometric view and our two related views that we're now going to dimension. So let's get to it. For all these dimensions, we're mostly going to use the smart dimension command. I'm going to do that and we're going to start to dimension this left hand view. I'll click on Smart Dimension, and the first dimension I want to put into place is this through hole diameter. I'll click the inside circle, bring my dimension down and click it into place, and I'm going to need to change the formatting a little bit by adjusting the value. I need more precision, so I will choose this two decimal place precision. I want to adjust the leaders and I want to force my leaders inside the feature. I click that and I'm ready to move on. I'm going to use Smart Dimension again and I'm going to dimension this hole. I'll click Edge 1, Edge 2, and I'm going to place my um, text and I would like to adjust this value a number of times. So we need to add tolerance. I'm going to add a bilateral tolerance. My upper value is 0.2. My lower value is 0. And my nominal precision is 0. I need to revise my same as nominal precision for the tolerances to one decimal place. I now see 6 plus 0.2 minus 0. I have six holes, so in my dimension text I'm going to click into the front end and type 6x with a space using the capital letters, and that dimension is ready to move on. I need to get a 60 degree angle Again, I'm going to use Smart Dimension. I'll click my first center line, my second center line, and click the 60 degrees into place outside of the 6 millimeter diameter dimension. If I click it inside, notice that this angle dimension line is crossing the extension lines of the linear dimension. We always want to avoid that. I'm going to click it into place and because I have six holes I have six spaces so I will add 6x into my dimension text and click the green check mark and I have this left hand view dimensioned. Notice the dimensions are getting pretty close to my section view. I'd like some more space, and I'm going to create that. I will click, I will hover until I see the orange dash line box, which is, if I click on that, the view, and then of course I see the properties. And by the way, I can just drag it on over to the left and create more spacing. Notice that when I do that, both of my views automatically stay aligned and it was up here. I'm going to bring it down to create some more space between my revision block and the part that I have. I'll click the green check mark and I want a little more space down here between my section AA title and the view itself. I'm going to need to prep this view for some dimensioning with center lines, so let's do that. I'm going to use this annotation tool and come back and use the center line tool. I'm going to create a center line through the center of the part by clicking the upper end lower edge of the through hole. I need a center line through this upper hole and I need a center line through my 30 degree angled hole. Once I've placed them, hit escape a couple times, select this center line and drag using grips the ends of the center line so that it proceeds all the way through the part and I will drag my angled line so that it comes down and crosses over the center line of the part. I think that's all I need. I'm going to put some dimensions in and then we're going to find that we need to do a little bit of geometric creation. 
We'll get to that in a minute. For these horizontal linear dimensions, I'm going to use the Smart Dimension tool. I'm going to click each edge and place my text with a further click. And just continue working. I'm going to ignore this 30 millimeter dimension for now. That's going to the dimension that's going to require a little bit of construction work ahead of time. So normally that's where I would click this 80 millimeters, but I'm going to skip up to the next line, leaving room horizontally for my 30 millimeter dimension. I'm going to continue on and put in 100 millimeters and click it into place. So the next thing I'm going to work on are my diameter dimensions here on the left. I'll use Smart Dimension, click on the upper and lower edges, put a dimension into place, and finally click on the outside diameter and put it into place, vertically offsetting my values. I never want to line them up perfectly horizontally. So I'll come back and click into my 40 millimeter dimension. I need to change some properties here. I want my precision to be one decimal place. So I'm down there at 40.1. And I want to choose to create limits. And in this particular case, my upper limit needs to be, I think I'm going to try this, 0.1 and my lower limit needs to be 0.1. And let's see what I get. I get 40.2 to 40.0. That's what I'm looking for. Let's adjust the outer diameter. I want to create the same type of limit dimension. In this particular case, I want the precision to be two decimal places. And my upper limit is going to be 0.125 and my lower limit is going to be 0.125. Notice I get my 60.250, so apparently that tells me that I didn't choose two decimal places, I accidentally chose three, and I'll click those two decimal places. Click my green check, and if I zoom back out and do a kind of visual check, those dimensions are clearly too crowded together. I'm going to drag them out and give myself some more space so that my drawing has clarity and is easy to read for the end user. So most of my dimensions are in place. It's time to work on this 30 millimeter dimension. I think what I'm going to do at this point is zoom back out a little bit, save my drawing, and end this chapter. I hope you've enjoyed this chapter. We've gotten quite a bit of dimensioning done, and I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter.